Thank you, God, that you know everything about us, that even when we don't know what's going on, you already know. We thank you that we can come before you boldly, that we never have to be afraid, that we never have to be scared, we never have to fear you, that we can come before you as children, that we are accepted in the beloved. We thank you that your son came to this earth and he gave his life for us, that as we sang earlier, he did not despise the cross, but he saw the joy that was set before him, and that joy is us. That joy is your children. That joy is every single human being that calls upon the name of Jesus, becomes your child. That is what your son died for. And we thank you that today we stand here and we are free. We thank you that because of what you did, we are free. That where, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that as born again believers, we know that wherever we set our feet, the spirit of the Lord is. So there is freedom. There is no bondage that can hold us. So we give you all the glory today, God. We thank you for everything that you did. We thank you that you saw us in our mess. You saw us in our sin. And you said, I want that person. I love that person. And you did whatever it took to get us. And we just, we just thank you that we stand before you today, children of God, sons and daughters of the King. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. You can take your seats, guys. So, you know, when we were singing King of Kings, I was actually hoping we would finish there, only because the words are so awesome. I was, you know, the verse where it says, to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. It's awesome. You know, sometimes we sing songs that are so profound and so powerful and we we don't catch the words we're singing we sing them and I, I feel like sometimes I don't even realize how powerful what I'm singing is and how amazing it is and you know it says here that even in your suffering you saw to the other side while I was standing at the back earlier I was thinking of the the story where Jesus walked on the water and where Peter was walking on the water and I was talking to somebody yesterday who said that they weren't sure what their next step was because life was, you know, just being life and going on around them. And they were focusing on, you know, trying to get things aligned or things in the right order and just trying to sort life out. And I just said to them, you know, the story of when Peter was walking on the water, what happened was that he started looking at life. It was the storm, I know, but he started looking at life. Because when we, when we focus on Jesus, when we look at Jesus, we don't see the storm. We don't see the stuff going on around us. And when we sang this line earlier, it says, for even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. You know, even Jesus, he had to focus on, on God. He had to focus on the promise. He had to focus on what he knew was going to come to pass. Even in his suffering, he saw to the other side. You know, if he'd have focused on what was going on, what was physically going on, I mean, not in his spirit, but if he'd have focused on the fact that he was going to be crucified, he was going to be tortured. If he'd have focused on that, I don't know what would have happened, but he didn't. It says he saw to the other side. And I really feel that it's a word for, for us today, or even just for maybe one or two people in the room, that, you know, walking on the water isn't talking about walking on the water. It's just talking about walking on the word. It's talk, talking about walking on the word that Jesus says. Jesus gives you a word and you start walking. But I believe, I don't know even for myself, that there's times when we look at the stuff. We look at the stuff and we don't realize we're sinking. In fact, sometimes we don't even notice we're sinking until we hit the bottom. And then we're like, oh, <laughs> I was sinking all this time. And it's because we just forgot to focus on him and not look at all the stuff going on around us. So, you know, he's for you. We just sang it. He's for you. He's for you over and over again. So, you know, all we need to remember that he is for us. He is for us. And when we focus on him, it doesn't matter what goes on. It doesn't actually matter. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't matter what's going on in life, what's going on in your family, what's going on in yourself, what's going on in your, in your physical body. When I say it doesn't matter, I don't mean it's of no concern. I just mean it doesn't affect the walk. Look at him and just keep walking. And you go there effortlessly he takes you there that's the best bit we don't have to do anything we just focus on him and it's like he's like yay it's like those things at the airport you know when you stand on them and you don't have to walk it's like the difference isn't it you stand on one of them and you you know that takes you there or you're like i can do this on my own and you just walk and everyone's going past you that's the difference do you know what i mean 
get on the, uh, it's not called an escalator, get on the travelator, do you know what I mean? Just stay on there, focus on Jesus, and he will effortlessly take you there. Anyway, <laughs> so I know I've already said welcome, but we have a, a little gift. We like to give a little gift to, to new people, and we know we have some new people here today who haven't been through these doors before. Um, I have to put it that way, because people who've been here like 10 times like to say, I'm new, and I'm like, you know. So if you've not been through the doors into the church on a Sunday morning before, put your hand up, please. And our friend Julio is going to bring you a little little gift. And, you know, I always like to say to the people on live stream, we can't give you a little gift because you're not here. So if you can physically get here next week, you'll get a gift. Um, <laughs> anyway, just to just to let everybody know, those in the room and those on live stream. So we do have Bible study on Wednesday, 7 o'clock, same time, same place, right here. Um, we have the, the team with us today. So we have a team hosted by EI from TKU, which is the King's University in Texas. I got it right this week. I didn't get it right last week. Um, we're going to hear from them in a moment. So we're really excited that they're with us. And we're going to be, after church today, we're going to be going down to Warsaw Town Centre to do some outreach. And then we're going to be in Liverpool all day tomorrow and all day Tuesday. That's Manchester, but anyway. <laughs> but we're going to be in Liverpool tomorrow and Tuesday, all day. If you're about today and you want to come and join us in Warsaw, go ahead. If you're in Liverpool tomorrow, come and join us. So, yeah, the only other thing I'm going to say is that we are going to take a, an offering at the end before worship. So if anybody does want to give, if you want to give by bank transfer, you can do that. We'll have the details up on the screen behind me, or we have envelopes for those who want to give by cash. And also, if you are a UK taxpayer, you can let us know, because then we can gift aid it, and our awesome government give us back 25%. So if you give £100, we get an extra £25. So if you are a UK taxpayer, do let us know, fill in a gift aid declaration. So um, because we've gone over a little bit, I'm going to hand straight over to Devon now, who is the leader of, <laughs> not that Devon, this Devon. The new Devon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hey, so, so glad to be here. We've known Selena and Andrew. I think we met you guys back in uh, 17, yeah, is when Jess and I met you. So we've known them a long time, and uh, we know a few of you and have done ministry with a couple people here. So anyway, we're just super excited to be here. Um, first, I want to share uh, a few testimonies. I want to have the team uh, come up and share a couple testimonies. So Luke, if you want to come up. And, uh, yeah, and just share your testimony, and, uh, yeah, perfect. Hey, guys, I'm Luke Lamar. Um, how I came to Christ was I grew up in a household that went to church, but I ended up uh, not being very treated very right. I was physically abused, I was uh, molested, and then I was... Um, I felt worthless, unwanted, and I was suicidal, and I nearly committed suicide at the age of eight. So I did not like Christianity. I didn't like Christians because I felt like those were the people who claimed to attack me and hurt me all my life. So I thought, if that's Christ, I don't want anything to do with them. But then God had different plans for me. <laughs> I, uh, in 2017, I started attending this um, youth group, not really want, just wanting to hang out with friends, not really trying to come to Christ or anything. And then um, I, um, one of the services, this one pastor came on stage, and then he, he had such radical faith and hope in God that I was like, I need that. I think he's absolutely nuts, but I need what he has in my life. I need that type of hope and assurance. So then I met him. He exuded the love of God in a way I'd never felt before from my family or anyone around me. And then um, that got me intrigued, not really saved at that point. It took a couple months, but then I eventually I came to Christ. And then all my problems did not go away. My anxiety didn't go away immediately. My depression didn't go away immediately. The suicidal thoughts didn't even go away immediately. But I had a comforter, and I had the love of God comforting. Something shifted in me. I, was not, I wasn't completely there, but I was progressing. And I am free from suicidal thought. I'm uh, I'm free from abandonment issues, and I'm free from anxiety and depression now. Thank you, man. 
Yeah, and I'm going to have Shelby come up, too, and just share her testimony real quick. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm a little nervous, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> so, okay, I grew up in a Christian household as well. Um, I actually also went to a Christian private school, but I didn't know Jesus. I grew up in my childhood with a lot of pain. Um, my mom and my dad were divorced. My mom got remarried, and he left when I was seven. Um, I was bullied, um, basically told like I wasn't enough um, by the Christian community around me. So I knew Jesus was real, and I knew that I wanted to go to heaven. So I was, when I was seven, I was like, let's get baptized, not really knowing anything about it. But um, long story short, I coped with food. Um, from the age of like fifth grade to seventh grade, I coped with food. I ate, and that caused me to gain weight. And in seventh grade, um, I looked around me, and these popular girls were um, trying to lose weight and doing all of these things, so I started doing that. And in eighth grade, I developed anorexia and bulimia. Um, I was then hospitalized, and um, I then got worse and was hospitalized again. I dealt with suicidal thoughts, suicidal like ideation, and almost committed suicide, but I didn't, <laughs> thank the Lord. But um, yes, um, in ninth grade, I went to treatment again, and um, I ended up trying to find love in a toxic relationship, where there I was um, abused, and um, that was uh, sexually and um, emotionally, but the Lord has come through since then. Um, long story short, we broke up, and basically, when you get to the point where you can't do anything else other than literally say, Lord, why, that's what happened to me, because I'm stubborn, and um, long story short, I was like, Lord, I give you my life. On um, August 28th, 2020, I was like, Jesus, I give you my all, because I gave everything to everything else, and I tried everything else, because I had to try everything else before I tried him, because I thought it was going to work. It did not work. <laughs> And now um, I am in recovery from these eating disorders, and I'm walking in freedom, obviously. Um, that takes time. Sometimes it's through deliverance. Sometimes it's through literally walking through in recovery, and that's what I'm doing. But the Lord has freed me from all depression. I have no suicidal ideation, no cutting, no nothing. And um, I love life. Obviously, it can be hard, but I love the, the hard points and I love the easy points I love it all and I want it all honestly I have I've had a teacher um his name is Mark Lopez in English and he's really taught me um TKU knows him but he's taught me a lot about um like loving it all and loving the good and the bad and the ugly because you, you don't have life without all of it so just stay encouraged that through the wind through the waves you know he's with you and he loves you and the Lord has given me the gift of joy and you know through the depression through the heartache now I can show others that it's possible to, to get to the other side so yeah awesome yeah so good Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I promise I'm not copying anyone this morning with my message. Uh, I think the Lord has a the theme, so praise God. Uh, Selena, you preach my message, so I can just... Thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, there's coffee in the back. So um, anyway, um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name's Devin, and um, I'm from Indiana in the States. Uh, me and my wife, Jessica, have lived in Budapest, Hungary for four and a half years and um, as missionaries with European Initiative, which I think some of you are aware of. Uh, if not, you can find out today what we do at downtown Walsall. Uh, and so, yeah, we, uh, we attended Karis Bible College in Colorado. Uh, I graduated in 2018, and then at the end of 2018, uh, we moved to, uh, to Budapest, Hungary and been missionaries there. Uh, it's been awesome, it's been crazy, it's been hard, it's been everything, and uh, I can't imagine doing anything else, to be honest. Um, we absolutely love it, um, just getting to um, introduce lost Europeans to uh, a relationship with Jesus, and something so much more than religion, uh, something that religion can't offer, um, you know, the reason that most Europeans don't know God because of religion, and we can come to them and say, hey, like, it's not about that, and I don't know how many people we've talked to that, you know, it's always, I've never heard this before. Why have I never heard this before? 
you know, maybe they don't get saved that day. You know, they're not ready to, like, go from everything that they've been taught of this angry God, you know. But in that moment, they're like, there's something true about this, and there's something that I want. Um, just like Luke said, he's like, I don't want anything to do with Christians. And to be honest, uh, there's a lot of Christians I probably wouldn't want anything to do with, too. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and to be honest, it was probably myself when I was younger. But, um you know, when you start to get to know Jesus outside of what people make him out to be, you start to realize, man, he's so much better than I could have imagined. And so, okay, I need to just watch the time or we're going to be here all day and skip lunch. So, uh, yeah, shut me down if I'm talking too long. <laughs> uh, so today I want to I wanna share a message, um, and I've titled it Cleaning House. And, um, and so some of you, I'm going to start this message, and you're going to be like, whoa. We're under grace. So just relax, breathe. All right, when we get there, I'll land this plane. Uh, hopefully it doesn't crash. But uh, I want to start with a question and, and ask you guys, uh, how many of you are messy people? Yeah? Just naturally messy, like things are, you know, you've got, it's just kind of things are, it's okay if things aren't perfect. Yeah? Okay, that's me uh, to an extreme. It just is like, it's fine. Like, it's all fine. I'll just do it later. It's okay. Certain things don't bother me, right? My wife, not like that. She likes the house clean. Uh, she likes the house in order uh, because she can't relax when it's not. And I'm like, look, the kitchen's in the other room. It doesn't bother me. The dishes are there, and I don't see them. So as long as I'm not cooking, I couldn't care less, okay? And, and I'm just kind of that way. And I've always been that way, that it's like, I mean, I don't like everything a disaster, but it doesn't have to be, you know, good. And I really hate cleaning. It all boils down to just, I hate cleaning. That's really it. It has nothing to do with anything else other than I hate cleaning. And, and so I don't know if you guys have this, but we have, so we've got a small apartment in Budapest, but we do have a second room. And that second room is kind of a storage room, sort of. It's where we throw all the junk we don't know what to do with. And then the room is just a bomb all the time. It's a constant mess. It's a constant mess. And so anytime somebody comes to stay with us, it's like, oh, we got to get the, the spare bedroom ready. You know, it's got a bed in there, but, like, you can't even walk in there right now. You know, her bike's in there, and we've got stuff we need to get rid of that we haven't had time to do that we put in there. And we've got all the ministry stuff, so we've got all the, you know, outreach flyers and speakers and all this stuff. So you can't walk in there for anything. And, and you shut the door, and boom, it disappears. Until someone comes over, and then you're like, oh, my gosh, no. And you're, like, freaking out. And, like, oh, people are coming over. Now I have to do this. And you're kind of moving stuff around. And some of it just gets shoved into our bedroom, you know, behind the door or something. Uh, because we don't really know what to do with it. But we're not sure we want to get rid of it. And we're just kind of in this place. And, and I really just don't enjoy that moment or really anything about cleaning. And so that is just not a fun moment. And I think often we kind of do this with Jesus this same thing, you know, we, we come to God with all our junk, and we invite him in, right, and we're like, hey, come, come into my life, and here's, here's the place you can stay, and the place he can stay is a hot mess, right, it's the spare bedroom that you can't walk into, and it's okay, right, that's, that's the point of Jesus, to come in and to clean up our mess, right, because we can't do it without him, but then we say, well, we look at it and we're like, well, if we just kind of push this to the side here and we push this to the back, we'll, we'll make room for you here. And he's going, okay, you know, all right, we'll, we'll work with this. And, and we kind of start to make these excuses of why we have this stuff and why we need this stuff, right? And we kind of start to hold on to this stuff a little bit. And, and I guess my question is, are, are we really making room for Jesus in our life? Are we allowing him to move stuff is kind of where I'm going with this. And, and I'm not saying that we have to get our lives cleaned up to come to Jesus, all right? So don't, don't pull out the gray stones and throw them at me yet, all right? I'm just saying that there's stuff in our lives that we, you know, it's a little hard to give somebody something if you're holding on to it, yeah? Okay? So bear with me here. You know, we give him the spare room, and we say, we'll just move the stuff aside. We'll just add Jesus to our lives, right? God, I give you everything. I give you my life. Here's a space for you. This is for you. 
I want to be in a relationship with you. And then we kind of just push things to the side. So going back to our relationship, house is a bomb, I'm, I'm fine. She's not fine, right? It's bothering her. She can't relax. She's like, ah, Devin, this is not. And so what do I do? I make changes for her. I adjust to things that she likes, right? There's, there's compromise in our relationship of, okay, it can't be perfect all the time, but it can also not be a bomb all the time. Where's that balance, right? And finding out what works for us and to adjust to each other. And so in our relationship with God, it's a little different because one of them's perfect. One of them's perfect, yeah? Going into this, one's perfect. And it ain't me, all right? <laughs> Shocker, it ain't me. And so when we go into this thing, we, we, again, we kind of just, okay, God, there's your spot, but I don't want to get rid of all this stuff. This, I'm still, I'm holding on to this. And, and he's, he's okay with it. He'll, he'll kick it out of the way and come in anyway, and he'll stay there, and he'll be in relationship with you, and he'll love you, and he cares about you, and he wants to change your life. And he's not going to be a dictator and force you and start throwing stuff out of the house, but he wants to change your life. He wants to change your life. He doesn't just want to be a part of it. He wants to change your life because he knows what's good for you. You know, it's, it's hard being a Christian. It's the best thing on the planet, and it's the hardest thing on the planet because it's a free gift that costs you everything. We say that a lot. This is when we're sharing the gospel. You know, the, the, the gospel itself, the, Jesus Christ, salvation is a free gift. And the fact that you cannot earn it. There's nothing you can do to get it. But it will cost you everything. It costs you your whole life. And that's the hard part is that I think as Christians, and I've seen it in my life, that as I walk with the Lord, it's like more and more things come up and it's like, I need to give that up. I'm holding on to something, and that's, being a, that's a Lord in my life, right? And it's that thing that's blocking his room, his space, and it's, it's, you're kind of just like holding on to these things, and you're trying to co-inhabit it with this junk and Jesus, and he's saying, Devin, I'd love to take that from you. I'd love to get rid of that for you. In Romans... Romans 6, it says this, uh, 2 through 4. It says, How shall we who have died to sin live in it any longer? And do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If, if the old has died and we're a new creation, that means we have to let go of that old thing, right? We, we don't want to sit there and, you know, cling to it, you know, if I'm trying to give something, you know, and I think a good picture of this is like, um, pop this out real quick because it's the only thing I have. Uh, it's like this. It's like, yeah, I've got this, this Apple pen, and I don't know if you, you've got an iPad, I think. Uh, you know, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, you know, Maybe it's a bad thing, and this is Jesus, obviously. He's got a white shirt on. He, he came prepared. Thank you, Andrew. And, and we're sitting here, and we're like, God, I just have this thing, and take it, Lord. God, I give it to you. I just stand before you, and I just hold it up, and I say, Lord, it's yours. But then we kind of hold on to it, you know? And, and I've seen this in my life, and we sit here, and we go through this whole thing of, like, surrendering to Jesus, and, and wanting to, like, let go of those things, but then we just hold on to them. And it's like we tie our identity to those things so much. And I could name off a few, anxiety, pornography, anger. I mean, there's so many, right? Like, self-worth, that's a big one. You look at yourself as, like, though you're worthless. And, and all of these things are like saying... God, I give them to you, but I really don't think that you can take them. The blood of Jesus wasn't really enough to free me from this. 
and, and I've done this in my own life, so I'm not preaching to myself here. And, and we sit here and we do this whole thing. It's like, oh, okay, Lord, here it is again. Here it is again. Here it is. And, and, and then we're like, we're just not seeing it, you know. And we can't keep walking in the same life if we're a new creation, right? We can't, you know, and this is, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to let it go because we've tied our identity to it. Right? I mean, if you ask Luke or Shelby about their testimonies, it wasn't easy to let those things go, those hurts. But once it happened, it's like, why did I not do this sooner? It's the only question we ever have. I was such an angry person growing up. Like, so angry. Just constant anger inside. And it was, you know, my parents and my family would be like, it's like walking on eggshells around you. Like, it's so hard to be around you because I just never know when you're going to explode. And my, my thing was, well, at least you can get away from me, right? Like, I'm stuck with me. Like, I, I don't get a break. You can walk in the other room, right? And, and I'm stuck with me, and I'm angry inside, and I don't know why. And really long story short, it was based in some unforgiveness, but it was based in this, the, the washing of the word. My time at Karis is what got rid of that. Not because Andrew said the right thing, not because Barry is such a good teacher, but because the word of God was going into me and cleansing me. And you can't walk in the old life when you're being cleansed, when you're renewing your mind. And that's what changed me. And the only thing that I, that I regret is that I didn't do it sooner that I didn't step into that area sooner, that I didn't allow the Lord into that place saying, God, you're right, it is in the way. And I don't know what to do with it, so I give it to you. You know, and all of this, it, it, sounds, it sounds good, right? It's like, wow, that's just, that's just wonderful. So good, thank you for sharing that. But how do I do that? Like, this is my thing. You hear these sermons, and you're like, yeah, you're right. Like, I totally agree with you, 100%. Great. I've done that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how. Like, I've, I've given it. I've let go of it. I feel like my hand is wide open, and I'm handing this pen, you know, and it's just still there. So what's going on? And, you know, we've got a, a saying in the States. You probably have it here. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Why is that? It's because that's what you're looking at. That's what you're looking for, you know? And so we so often, we get fixated, and we're like, why am I not seeing breakthrough in this area? Why am I struggling in this area? In Romans 8, 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the spirit, you know, and a lot of you think, whoa, you saying I'm living towards the flesh. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe it's to me, this is, this is the grass is greener verse, right? It's like for those that live according to the flesh and their minds are on the things of the flesh, they do those fleshly things. And those that are living according to the spirit and they're focused on the spirit, they live of the spirit. And I've had struggles in my life so many times that I feel like, God, it just doesn't go away. Why am I still struggling with this? But then if I had to paint a picture of it, I'm sitting here like, ah, it's just the problem's there. It's just right there. Lord, I need you to take the problem. And you just fixate on the problem. You know, like you stare at it. And I don't know how many of you have jobs. But what if there was a problem at your job, and every time there's a problem, you just stare at it, you look at it, you fixate on it, you start telling your boss about the problem, and they're like, okay, what's the solution? And you're like, I just can't get rid of it, and blah, blah, and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going, and the only thing you ever fix your eyes on is the problem. Wouldn't be real good. I mean, you might not have your job very long. What do, we, what do we tell our staff? When you come to me with a problem, bring me a solution too. Bring me a solution. I don't care if it's the right one. It can, it can even not be the right one. But let's, let's get our eyes 
off of the problem, and how can we move past that, right? And it's so easy with the Lord because he's just asking, just stop looking at the problem and look at me. I've got the solution. I'm ready to grab your hand and lead you. And, and, and we, can, we can walk out of this. You know, it's just like you were talking to Peter on the water. Everything was good until he started staring at the problem. He's walking on the water, looking at Jesus, and we're good. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, lightning. Oh, big wave. Oh. And then next thing you know, he's like, I'm drowning. Oh, Lord, save me. You know, and he's freaking out over here. And the Lord's like, bro, everything was good. What, was, what happened here? He comes over, and he grabs his hand. He pulls him up out of the water. He's like, what's going on, dude? Like, you, look at me. And we do that so often, don't we? We have these problems that, well, the bank account's a little low this month, and, you know, I've got to get new tires on the car, or I've got to get whatever, you know, and I, it's really not there. And Man, I've got this, and I've got that, and rent, and I've got, you know, this, and, man, this problem, my back's hurting, and, you know, with anything, right? I'm struggling here, and I'm just an emotional wreck, and I'm tired, and, I do this. I still do this. I'm sitting here preaching this, and it probably happened two weeks ago. I'm like, oh, Lord, everything, you know, it's just so much. And, and then you, you come to this realization that we were never meant to do any of it on our, on our own anyway. And our focus is wrong. Our focus is wrong. We're, we're staring at the fleshly thing. We're staring. We're focusing on the problem, and we're not focusing on the spirit. We're not looking to God. What happens when we get busy? What's the first thing that typically goes? Our time with the Lord. Why is that? Now, maybe some of you are like, no, that's not it. I spend more time. Okay, well, you're the holy ones. But for me, I start, I start cutting out any, anything I can to get more sleep, right? And I'm like, and then I start wondering why it's just getting harder and harder. And it's because your, your helper, you've left him alone. You, you, you've decided I'm going for this. and oh, I know that the stripes of Jesus healed my body, but I'm struggling. It hurts. And I'm having a hard time getting off of the problem and onto you. And you start to talk to him. I mean, David did a great job of this. He's like, here's all my complaints in the world, but he always finished with, but God, you're greater, you're awesome, you're magnificent, you died on the cross for me. You, you know, he didn't say that, but we can. You know, you, you got this stuff that it's like you start to magnify who he is and the problem gets smaller and smaller. And David modeled what it looked like to change our focus from I'm struggling to Jesus. It's such a good model of that. And so, and we see that with Peter, the, vi the, the opposite of that, from Jesus to the problem, which we do. And what happened? He started sinking. And so, it's, it's, it's so important where our focus is. It's so important what we look at, what we fixate on, and, and I know this is, this is not some epiphany, and most people have heard this before, but it's so important, especially for me. I mean, usually the stuff that I'm sharing is stuff God's speaking to me. He's like, Devin, again, we talked about this a year ago, but let's talk again about it. Because why? I'm fixated on the problem and not the solution. And, and I just share this because there's so many, I really believe there's people here. It's like you know this. You've heard this 50 times, but are we letting it sink in, and are we actually doing something about it? Are we actually going to look at Jesus instead of all the junk in the room? I think in, I'm going to read this, Philippians 3, 13 through 14. It says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing I do Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul says this perfectly. Forgetting what was behind and straining for what was ahead. And, and it almost sounds like works, right? It almost sounds like, like oh, Paul, I don't know, man. Like, what are you doing here? But it's, it's true because 
how often do we not forget what was behind? We hold on to it. We try to drag it and strain on to what was ahead. And the word strain, it can mean to, to make an unusually great effort. And it can also mean to pour something through a perforated device, right, or a, a, a material in order to separate solid matters and liquids, yeah? We do it all the time with pasta, right? <laughs> okay, so it can be both. And, and in our lives, it is both. Because it, it's something that he leaves behind and he says, God, I'm, I'm putting an unusually great effort into you, into the calling, into who you've said that I am. But at the same time, God puts us through a strainer and he pulls out the junk if we let him, if we let him. And so we have to let go of it, and we have to change our focus from it, right? How do you let go? You change your focus. I believe that's it's what Paul was talking about when in 2 Corinthians, he says to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. You know, and I used to think this was like list out all your sin, right? Is like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm struggling here. Yeah, write it down, write it down. Okay, this is, this is a problem. This is not good. This is, and you kind of start to go through this. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. I thought, man, this is, I'm, I got to work to be saved. I got I to gotta examine myself to make sure that I'm in the faith and I'm not out of faith. But what he's really just saying here is to just look at yourself and see where your focus is at. Where's your focus? You can't walk in faith staring at the problem. You walk at faith when you look at the solution. Right? And so am I in the faith? Well, am I using the faith I have or not? Well, what am I looking at? So how do I examine myself? How do I, how do I look to see what's... Because sometimes... You hear these messages and you're like, you know, I know I've got junk, but I'm not really even sure what the junk is anymore, you know? And, and I'm not saying we need to get fixated on the junk, but it's good to know what it is and just say, okay, cool. Lord, that's yours. Focus on him, right? And we can release that when we know what it is. We don't hold on to it. We don't sit here and, you know, cling to it thinking that it's good. Galatians does a great job of this, telling us the fruit of the Spirit, you know, another one is in, in Corinthians, when, it, when it, talking about love, they're wonderful filters. When you start to look at it, you say, God, is, is this what my life looks like? Am I walking in the Spirit? Am I focused on the Spirit? Am I focused on the Lord? Does my, does my life look like love? Does it look like joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Is that what my life looks like? Or does it look like the previous verses of selfishness, of, of, of envy, of, of uncleanliness, lewdness. And it, it'll tell you where your focus is. I'm not, I'm not saying you need to go through this and list out your sin, but if you're looking more like one than the other, then your focus is off. Your focus is off. We're not living in the spirit. We're walking in the flesh because we're focused on those things. And so I share that because sometimes we need that practical step of saying like, how do I go from where I am with the dirty room that I'm not really ready to touch to actually allowing God to say, hey, let me, let me go in there and let me clean it for you. And really all it takes is opening that door to say, God, it's, it's a mess in here. It's a mess in here. But I need help because I can't clean it up. I can't get rid of these things. I've tried. I've really tried hard. And it's just not going. God, I need your help. And what does that do? You're not even in the room. You're not even looking at the stuff. You're looking at the solution saying, God, this is too much for me to handle. Right? And it's so important that we do this on a daily basis, constantly reminding ourselves. And so I, I just... I like to give like a point, like a stepping stone, right? It's like you hear a good message, but where do you go with this? And it's like, so I want to take a minute and, and I want each of us to just ask the Lord 
to just take a minute to open that door, right? And to say, God, I'm, I'm not entirely sure of everything that's in there, but here's the junk. You know, and you might know there's, you know, there's, there's maybe a bag of clothes you need to get rid of, but I couldn't tell you every single item in our spare bedroom. And sometimes we can't tell God every issue in our like little cubby in our heart that we hide junk. But you know the big items that are there. <laughs> and and I just want to take a minute. And and you can do it however you want. You can picture it. I obviously picture my apartment and just opening that door and saying, God, I just need you to come in here. I need you to just take this junk. Because I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where to put it, but I know that it's gotta go. And and so I just want to take a minute and each one of you just with the Lord, just open that door for him and say, Lord, there's a lot of junk in here. I just need you to take it. And so I'm just, I just want to be quiet for a minute. I'm going to pray real quick, and then I'm going to let you guys just have a moment with the Lord. Just talk to the Lord and ask him about the junk and, and just release it. And just picture yourself just opening that door, opening your hand, letting go of it, whatever it is. And just start focusing on him as the solution, right? So I want you to start by just kind of imagine the junk in the room. And then imagine opening that door and just saying, Lord, I need you to take it. And then start picturing what he did for you on the cross, that he removed all of this, that he took all of these things. And that all it takes is to look at him and say, Jesus, I need you. I just need you. And so, God, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. God, that you, you pour out your grace on us every day. And Lord, that you're pleased with us as is. God, but we don't have to stay where we are. God, that we can allow you to change us, to make us look like Jesus. That our actions would match Jesus. That who we are just screams Jesus. And so God, we just open that door right now. So God gave me kind of a picture when I was just closing my eyes, and I want to share it with you. And um, He's given me this picture before, so he just kind of brought it back to me. But I was praying one day, and uh, uh, I just saw this this like junk inside of me, and it looked like like the roots of a tree, just black, and kind of went all over. And I just said, Lord, I don't know how to get rid of all this. And you know, when you rip out roots, like usually there, there's like a lot of like pieces that are like little tiny pieces that get left, the little bits at the end. And, um, and, and I saw him take it, and I just saw these little tiny pieces that were still there. And I was like, God, I want all of it, though. And, and he said, it, it, and, I, and, and as soon as I said that, he, he like, I saw like a beam of light shoot into me and burn everything out, like just torch it completely. And then it was like it just started glowing, and then it came back to like a brand new, like, it was brand new. There was no, like, outline of where it was. It was just brand new, right? It's, you know, like, when you when you fix something, there's usually, you, something breaks, you glue it together, there's, there's a seam. There was no seams, nothing. It was just completely gone. And God said, I will burn out anything that you give me. I'll burn out anything you give me, and it'll look like it was never there. And so I just want to share that with you guys, that that thing that maybe you're struggling with, still struggling with, and, and you feel like, oh, 
just still there. There's still just a, there's just residue. There's still stuff. If you just allow him to torch it, just completely burn it out. Just give it to him fully. It'll look like it was never there. Yeah. So I'm just going to pray, and uh, uh, we'll end there. But uh, uh, I also want to offer, is it okay if we do, we have time for prayer? Yeah, yeah. Um, if anybody wants prayer, um, uh, the team's here. I'm going to ask the team to come up. And um, If you need prayer for anything, if you just need prayer to just help release something, um, we can stand in agreement with you, huh? Do it at the end. Pray it at the end. Okay, super. Yeah, so we'll be available after uh, after we kind of close. If anybody wants prayer, we'll be up here in the front. And uh, we'd love to pray with you and just uh, stand in faith with you, knowing that God's a good God who gives good gifts. And uh, he gives and takes away. And the things that he takes away is all the junk in our life. Uh, and he gives us gifts uh, that just continue to pour out on our lives. And uh, Lord, we just thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for... Um, God, everything you've done for us when we didn't deserve it, God, that you've made us holy, you've made us worthy, you've made us uh, righteous, God, in your Son. And Father, we thank you. And Lord, we just uh, Lord, we just open our hearts today, God, that any of the junk that we're just continuing to hold on to that's hindering us from everything that you've called us to, we just open our hearts, we open our hands, we open our doors, and God, we just say, come in and take those things. God, we just give them to you, and we focus on you, because you are good. God, you're so good. You're so good. And Lord, we just love you. We thank you, God. And we just praise you for uh, this day. We praise you for the breath in our lungs. God, that we have one more day to make you known, to be with you. And so, Father, we just love you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Was that awesome? Uh, did you enjoy that? And you know, it is, as, as you said, Devon, God just has the exact message that we need at that time. At that time. Yeah. Um, as you were talking, I had an illustration actually as well. And it was this. <clears throat> Who drives here? Anybody drive a car? And God says... You can't drive your car forward when you're staring into your rear view mirror. We glance at it and we keep going forward. We don't stare at it. What's behind is, is behind you and it's gone. And I know, I mean, the message, I know, I know more the folks, you know, here. And that message about looking forward and not going back is what we need to grab, grab, a, grab, grab a hold of. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing behind us. It's all in front of us. Often we, we, we're told in, in church, look at the cross. And Jesus says, don't look at the cross. <laughs> the cross is behind you. You're supposed to be looking forward. The stuff I've done for you is in front of you. It's not behind you. I made a way there so you could go there. Stop looking back. The bitterness, the hurt, the anxiety, the fear, it's all behind yeah, you can go back and get it. I mean, Selena spoke a word, cast your cares. Saying, this is what I'm saying. This is what this church is getting. This is why it's awesome. And it's God is saying to us, we need to let go of, of the stuff we've been hanging on to. When we get born again, 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says what? That we're brand new. And we've never existed before. So we've never existed before. How can the things that we're thinking about be affecting us? Because we've never existed before. We're brand new. And if you're brand new, it means you're spotlessly clean, you're whole, you're complete, you're fulfilled, you're prosperous, your relationships are perfect. And then all we do is return again, as Devon says, and go, but what about this? And God says, what about what? So Devon, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome word, awesome word. So we're going to take up an offering as uh, Selena said at the beginning. And then at the end, we will have the prayer team, the, the team, if that's okay, to come and just to stand with us, just to pray with us and just agree on who we are and what God's done for us. Amen? Amen? So please take full advantage of these guys. They've come a long way and, and what they've been through and what they have can really help us. 
So we're going to take up our offering. Our friend Julio is here. If anybody needs an envelope, please let him know. And then we're going to finish with some worship. And then we can, we can get into the prayer. Yeah, if the guys could put up the bank details at the back, that would be awesome, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we're going to be in Warsaw in a little while. How long, Selena? What time? So we're going to be in Warsaw today at 2.30 doing an outreach with the, with the American team. Um, if you would like to join us, please come along. Um, we will see souls taken from the power of darkness into the kingdom of, of Jesus. So please come and join us. It says in James to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. So this is an opportunity for us to, to get out there and to, to show the love of God, to preach the gospel and, and see the faith that Jesus talks about working in our lives. Working is awesome. Very good. Okay, so worship team, would you like to come up and I'm going to pray for this offering? Ah, oh, the worship team have left. Yes, worship team. If there's just one or two of you, come up. So let me just pray over this offering and we'll, we'll go from there. Father, we thank you for the finances, Father God, that you provide us with, Father, to live our everyday lives, Father. It says in, in Deuteronomy, you've given us the power to gain wealth. And so we thank you, Father, that this wealth that you've, you've given us power to get, Father, can also be used to increase your kingdom, Father. And so as we come before you, we open our hearts to you. And again, an, another, another room where we open that door to you and we say, you know what, change my heart in this area of finances. So as we just hand over our money today, Father, we know that it's a seed planted. It's not um, leaving our lives, but it's actually adding to the harvest that is coming our way, Father. And so we bless it, Father, and I just speak finances, Father, God, provision over all of us in this place, Father, as we give uh, our time, our finances, Father, God, and our efforts today in the name of Jesus, Father. Amen. Amen. So, guys, if you'd like to stand, we're going to worship, and then we're going to pray in Jesus' name.